Hey guys, I'm back and I've got the bow now. You know, last time we had it plumb, we leveled the arrow. Now I know what I want that knock set to be, so this is how I tie mine on. Um, I get the arrow out of there and just put a knock of the same equivalent size. Uh, and I start at the bottom. Basically, what I'm going to do is just a series of overhand knots rotating from above and below the string. I want to leave, the first one's pretty important, you want to set that gap right there. So you don't get, you want a little bit of a gap between the knock and your lower knock set so you don't get knock pinch. Um, I'm not going to explain knock pinch later, but basically when you come to full draw, that space will disappear. It gets smaller because of the angle and the strength from going plumb to becoming more of an acute angle. That, that little space disappears. If you don't leave that little space, your arrow can get popped right off the string at full draw just because of the pressure that's created by the knock set squeezing the knock. So anyways. Um, you can see my little piece of, or that little part of paint in there I have too. I can remove this now that I got that started. The little silver paint right there is what I use from that magic marker, or freezer marker, whatever it is, uh, to get, uh, to mark right below my knock just in case that thing slipped. So, I used to do four or five, uh, that's about it right there, that's all I'm going to do. I like to stop on the top one and then just do another overhand knot. Nothing fancy here for sure. We're not, uh, you don't have to know all the knots of a, a sailor to, to figure this out. I actually don't cut this too close. Wow, carpenter with a really good knife. Fluff those frayed ends up. And then we're just going to kind of singe them in place. Lock them in there. Don't get the flame too close to your bow. Being too cautious. There it goes. Okay. Singe those down, kind of locks them right in place. Now we can put this back on there. We know what our space is going to be, but we'll get that in a second. And now the notch at the top. I'm going to do the same thing, except for this is going to be right up tight to our knock once we get our knock in the right spot. So right there is my lid. I don't know. I've zoomed this in as far as my camera will go. I'm hoping that you can see how I've got just a little teeny bit of space right there uh, below. Like when my knock, knock is pressed up against this knock so that I'm starting at the top, you've got just a little bit of space right there. It's probably a little too much. That's good. And that's something you got to experiment with too. You know, I'll usually get to get this all done and uh, during the sighting process I'll t have uh, the, the tripod set up and actually take a video of this at full draw, you know, basically I, I, I don't want too much gap left at full draw when the, when the string has the angle in it, and I also don't want to pinch it either. You kind of got to figure out, you know, with the, the way that the string comes off the cams on these new Hoyts, it actually kind of mimics a longer to axle axle bow. So you probably don't need as much space right there as you did in the past, or some of you guys are shooting 28 inch axle axle bows. So that's all. I always make the knock set smaller on the top than the bottom. And I, now, now here's where I, I, like I said, I'm not an expert. Uh, I'm just really good at uh, remembering things that are important to me. So, get this guy out of there now. Um, I want to say that because of the knock set being smaller at the top than it is the bottom, when it comes to full draw with the D loop on here, it'll create more force. Uh, I want to say up, but either way, the knock rides against the top one. <laughs> Some of the physics degree could probably explain that a whole lot better than I just did. I probably didn't explain anything. And this might not be how you do it. It might not be how you... Whatever. Um, it's how I do it. And if I can help somebody... Great. If, you, if you're laughing at me right now, great. I'll laugh with you. There we go. Send those guys on there. Next step is the uh, the D loop, and basically I just tied it. You guys have all done a D loop. If I can do a, a video of that too, I'll do it real quick. But basically, uh, it's just going to snuggle right up against those, and the knots will kind of almost kind of just start to press up around them. So, or the D loop, the D loop, D -loop knots over these knots. But this is getting long again, so I'll see you on the next one.